Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Today, I've got a great session and a great topic ahead of us. Uh, it's all around the magical morning ritual. I remember about five years ago, uh, I was I was really stressed out. Uh, I'd just come home from a speaking tour uh, in, in Asia, and I'd just come home, and I was so busy. At that time, I had uh, three hair salons and three gyms, and uh, one of the gyms was in Canada, and I was in Australia, so I had all of these you know businesses. Plus, I had a digital marketing agency, and uh, that had about about thirty odd staff in it. Plus. I had an education company, plus I had a speaking business, plus, plus, plus. I had all of this going on and I was tired and exhausted. And I got home on this Monday evening and I woke up the next day on Tuesday and I had this tax bill that was a surprise. And I was like, oh, now I've got this tax bill and I'm doing all this. And it was it was going to wipe out a huge amount of the profits uh, that I'd made. And I was just, oh, it was just so much. And so Tuesday morning, I just decided to go for a walk here in the Gold Coast and I'm, and I'm walking along the beach. And as I'm walking, uh, you know, along, along the beach, I, I was there and I, I see these, these two guys. And well, actually what happened is I sat down on this, this park bench and I just wanted a moment to myself and it kind of was the morning sun and uh, it just felt so good. And I sat there and then I hear these, these two older guys uh, come down and they were just noisy and laughing and annoying my little serenity, my little moment. And, uh, you know, to, to my horror, they decide to, you know, set up their little, their, their fishing lines and their, you know, their, they had all sorts of things going on and net they were throwing out about 10 meters from me. Uh, you know, what's that? Uh, I, I guess it's about 30 feet. And so I was like, oh, gosh. And I start judging them. I'm like, look at these two. It's a Tuesday morning. Look at them. And that doesn't look like, like, oh, they had like holes in this. I was just like, oh, man, I have to deal, deal with this. <laughs> and I noticed myself judging them as I'm sat there, judging them, you know, tired, jet lagged, busy, you know, on social media, it looked like I was a super successful person and traveling the world uh, you know, uh, doing all this speaking and all this talking and, you know, writing all this content and all this stuff and, you know, oh, it looks so good. And then I see these two and I, uh, I get engaged in their conversation and, and listen. And they start, uh, they start talking about how grateful they are for the day and, well, they weren't using those words, but how, you know, what a beautiful morning and a dream come true and living the dream. And something clicks inside of me. I actually realized that these two have more freedom and joy than I was having. And I realized that here was me with all of these things. I had millions and millions of dollars in revenue, but I, had, I didn't have anything I truly wanted. I realized that these two, and who knows, who knows their story? To me, they look like they didn't earn any money and, and they were just out there just, I don't know their story and didn't talk to them. But what I realized is it didn't matter in that moment. They had more freedom. They had more joy. They had more fun in their life. And I started to question and ask myself, how is it that I don't have that? I'm out here doing all these things. And I say that I want it for financial freedom. I say I want it for all of this. I say I want it for all these reasons, but I don't even have it. In fact, I felt like my business and all my stuff, they all owned me. And I made a decision in that moment that I was not I was not going to stay this way. I was going to change within the next year. I started doing some things a bit different. I sold all my gyms, all my hair salons. I closed down a, a, a digital marketing agency, shut it all down, moved everything into just one company and, and had a really good time. And, and I made a realization that I would be far, 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 far happier earning $5,000 a month and being able to experience life than I would be making millions and millions of dollars um, being a slave to the machine. And what I realized, and I want you to write this down, humans have a strange way of experiencing what we don't want and not experiencing what we do want. Isn't that interesting? We have a really interesting ability 
to to be able to keep experiencing what we don't want to experience and uh and not experience what we do want i wanted freedom I wanted to, I wanted success. I wanted freedom, but all I was doing was becoming more and more and more trapped by my decisions. Kind of crazy. I needed to shift. What I found out later is that my unconscious coding was repeating, repeating the exact instructions that I had given it when I was very young. And the instructions was given to chase, to be seen, to do big things, to get, get praised. That's what life's about. I never actually ever imagined that I would get there. And so every time I would get something, I had to add more and add more and add more to it to deny myself having it so that I could just keep the experience the same. And I realized that my unconscious was the programming was just keeping the same thing alive. And what was fascinating was it was different people, different instances, different times, different things, but the experience was the exact same experience that I had, being so annoyed at having to go to school that I hated, being so frustrated that I wasn't an adult, not being able to buy the things and do the things I wanted. I realized I literally could map the exact same, all the way back, the exact same feeling. It was the same experience. And then guess what? I could jump into the experience of my mother or father and they were having the exact same experience. Nothing had changed. I'd made different decisions. I had a different life. I had different people, but I kept on finding the same feeling, the same experience. And I notice this in others. I see people who create an amazing body and they still don't feel like they look good enough. I see people in the best relationship who feel lonely. I see people that dreamed of having a family. They dream. Now they've got this amazing family. Now they just got so much to do. And, and that, and that, we keep on repeating the same things. And the reason is, which we've talked about a lot, is that our unconscious has an egoic agenda to keep things the same. Now, lucky for us, the unconscious is changeable. It is changeable. It is programmable. It actually is a complete open book, and it's really happy to take instructions and then repeat what it is that it's told again and again and again and again and again. Uh, what happens, though, is most people don't know how uh, to be able to go and create those. So we're going to talk about this today because there's one thing you can do that makes all the difference. And that is what you do every single morning. You see, the unconscious wants to keep creating what is what it believes to be safe. Whatever it believes to be safe, it will allow you to have. There's a way for you to use a very specific process so that you can create suggestions of what is safe. And that's what we want to make sure that we do. Instead of you trying to have it and then make sure you feel good, you feel it ahead of time. You be it before you see it. You become it before it comes to be. By doing this, you allow it to exist in your life. And what happens as you make the shift, as you make the change, that which you once was thought was a dream or a wish or a possibility is just easy, effortless and flowing. There is no struggle because you are it. There is no problem. I was sharing this with my inner circle group yesterday. It was yesterday morning. It was a very uh, cold, wet morning here on the Gold Coast. And at 5 a.m., I found myself out going for my normal morning run in the rain. And I was about three Ks or two miles into the run. And uh, it dawned on me that this was just different, that I didn't used to be like this. It was very obvious. I was like, I didn't used to be like this. And I was like, hmm, well, that's right. But this wasn't a struggle. I just... This is who I am. The shift was real. And also uh, a few weeks ago, I had a very similar experience after coming back from New Zealand where I was, I was driving to work. And I just noticed that for the last two years, one of my investments had been paying me $50,000 every single month and it hadn't seemed abnormal. And that's because I'd upgraded my consciousness. I had become it. So why is it that we do the morning routine? Why is it we do the morning ritual is to become it so that it just flows. It just is. That's how it is. There's no fight. There's no internal dialogue that could think it could be any other way. So let's talk a little bit more about the unconscious. Okay. The unconscious is this incredible, fascinating part of your mind. And many have tried to compare the unconscious to the workings of some like, I don't know, great computer. And uh, in many respects, it's, it's like a great computer, but just more powerful than we could even really comprehend. And the unconscious aspect of you can make an infinite number of structural connections. In the book Flow, uh, it's believed that there's you know over three billion uh, bits of information the unconscious is paying attention to in every moment. And so, 
writers and musicians can use the unconscious uh, to complete what it is the self-conscious wants to do. And that's when you just see someone in complete flow. They've they've practiced and taught themselves how to, you know, play a certain sport and they become unconsciously competent. The challenge is many of us are unconsciously competent at programming lack or programming overwhelm. I was speaking and, and talking with a colleague earlier today, unconsciously competent at, at thinking that, uh, you know, at, at continually creating the exact same situation again and again and again and again and again. I want to be needed. I want to be needed. Now everyone needs me. I'm overwhelmed. I want to be needed. I want to be needed. What, why does everybody need me? I'm overwhelmed constantly. I want to be needed. Well, it's actually it's that, that that's creating this. And, and it, it's really interesting because that programming we designed and created, but we should actually be able to change. And this analogy shouldn't be taken too literally, but it's a nice one. When you take charge of directing your unconscious, the unconscious can start responding in automatic ways. How about this? What if your unconscious was this ally that you had taught how to do things and it just was played in the background exactly as you wanted it to be? What if you could just have your unconscious and it felt so weird if you didn't have abundance. It was just there creating abundance or creating confidence or creating love. What if you could figure out how to code it up, teach it, and then it would just play in that background for you? See, I find that very interesting. For those of you who are like, Chris, I've got a real problem with anxiety. Or I've got a real problem with this. I go, great. Would you know what you have got? Is you've got an unconscious that knows how to keep an instruction going. True. Like it knows how to be taught something and just keep playing it and playing it and playing it. That's a good thing. We just need to change that record. <laughs> you know, we need to take that one up, break that off, throw it away and put a new record in that says, I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. I'm happy and confident and free. Uh, you know, that's what we need, need to shift. And that, that's really, really fascinating. So see, the unconscious is deductive. It takes what it, what's there and it, and it creates meaning and truth from it. It doesn't have anything to create. So it doesn't bring anything into being it notices how it is and then create structure from it deducts it pulls pulls it in and it, it's very interesting and since the unconscious is so good at taking suggestion and then repeating it you can suggest and create new programming but it's not as easy as it sounds if you walk it down the street saying i love money and money loves me and you know you're lying to yourself there's a silent or invisible instruction being played there that I must lie to myself. You see that? If you have to try to trick yourself, there's something else that your unconscious is picking up. It doesn't just dismiss the fact that you, you know, you're saying, I have millions in my bank account, I have millions in my bank account, this, and there's a part of you that knows, no, you don't. It doesn't just dismiss a part of it, you know. It, it doesn't. It goes, yeah, okay, and that's not allowed or that's scary. There's so much more that it learns from that. Now, fueling a fire is a really good analogy uh, in the art of suggestion or art of creating or art of imprinting on your unconscious. If you put too little to the fire, you know, it, it won't burn. But if you put too much, you'll smother it. And so what we're going to talk about today is just this 15-minute-a-day process where you make choices, which is just enough every day to just teach the unconscious how you're going to be. Now, let me ask you, how many of you are doing the most important thing? Whenever I ask someone who's created big results, I say, what is it that you did? They say one thing. I do my choices every day. I do my choices every single day. I do the morning routine. Now, so for some of you that have been here a while, who's, who's, got, who's religious with this like me? Every day I do my choices. I step into it. I spend at least 15 minutes. Because it is the most important thing is every day, right after you wake up, while your brain is still sitting in maybe a, a delta uh, brain frequency or at least low beta and able to step in and, and do this. It is absolutely crucial. And if not today, it's, it's time, to, time to start. And so you want to make sure that you do this. The appropriate amount of fuel is every single day just to step into how you would like it to be. See it, feel it, be it, do it. Because here's the truth. Everything is a suggestion. Everything is a suggestion. And so trying to force your unconscious into something that's not right. But just by doing the choices, and we'll do them today, by stepping into them and teaching your unconscious how it is, noticing what might be in the way of having that, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. You just choose it. 
And you just choose it. You just become it every day. You just become it every day. You just become it every day, every day until all of a sudden you look at your life and you go, wow, how is it this? That's magic. You see, magic is when our conscious brain can't figure out how something turned up. That's magic. Yeah. So everything is a suggestion. Action is a suggestion. Inaction is a suggestion. Trying to trick yourself is a suggestion. Saying you will do something and then not doing it is a suggestion in that. Does that make sense? Everything has two parts to it. It's important to realize the unconscious has no discernment. It just takes everything that's there. You see, getting frustrated at something suggests by the way, frustration is really interesting. It's actually two emotions, a sense of anger and a sense of hopelessness and coupled with a little bit of desire. It's a really interesting thing. And you notice, well, what are all the, what, if, I'm, if I'm frustrated at this, what is it that I'm teaching my unconscious? Can someone type that in? It's a great question. What am I teaching my unconscious with this behavior? What am I teaching my unconscious? What is my true outcome? What would I like to be teaching my unconscious? Knowing that it's this beautiful ally. So following through is a suggestion. Following through is a suggestion. Every time you have an intention and then you fulfill that intention, it is seen by the unconscious as a success. A series of recognized established successes creates momentum. Now, every day we have, we have millions probably, or at least thousands of small intentions. These little successes are such a strong suggestion. And so one of the best ever suggestions that you can give to your unconscious is, I think something up, I decide to do it, and it's done. The unconscious doesn't really know the difference between you creating a million dollars and you creating a, a healthy breakfast or you saying you're going to go for a run and you finding uh, the, the ideal relationship. To the unconscious, that all fits under you creating something new. So one thing you'd love to teach your unconscious, who agrees? Give me a yes right now in the chat box. If you would like to teach your unconscious that when you decide something, it happens. Mm. Your morning routine gets to be a suggestion. I decide to do my morning routine, I do it. I do my choices, it's done. I wake up, I go for a run. I have my, my healthy nutritional drink, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. In the first 30 minutes after waking up, you could teach your unconscious that one you do follow through that two, that the, the new end results you want to create three, that you are, you've got an abundant amount of nutrition around you, that, that you take care of yourself, that you could give it so many suggestions. Couldn't you? Small successes repeated. The unconscious goes, I'm a winner right from the beginning. So you intend to get up at a certain time. You do success. You intend to get dressed success. You intend to be on time, success. You intend to, you know, do a workout, success. You meditate, success, choices, success. Have your green, healthy drink, yes. Have your nutrition, yes. You know, make your kids food, yes. Do this, yes, 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 yes. You could have so many that you chose to do something you did. You could be such a follow-through person, you know, and, and just create that. And that's why the morning routine is so important. It's not what the morning routine is. It's that you choose to do a morning routine and you follow through. Being a follow through person is what the morning routine is about. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's about that, but it's, a, it's about making a commitment and being someone who's someone who makes commitments and follows through. A person who rises an hour early and does exercise, it benefits them the exercise, right? Like that makes sense. We know that endorphins, uh, you know, healthier body, cardiovascular system. That, that's all good, but it benefits their consciousness even more because they made a commitment to themselves and followed through. And I don't know about you. I don't know which one's more important. They both sound good, but I really believe that a lot of time, my morning routine, when I finish it, 
I've just taught my consciousness that I'm a follow through person. And then when I go to do something else during the day, I'm already a follow through person. And every day I'm a follow through person. I wake up and the first thing I'm teaching my unconscious is I'm a follow through person. I do what I say. I say what I do. I do what I say. I say That's who I am. That's what I do. And so if I say I'm going to do it, if I write it down, it's done. And do you see that? Do you see the power in that? It's such a simple thing. And that's why I think it's a keystone habit. The keystone, meaning it unlocks everything. It's a keystone. It holds the arch. It's the one. It's the one thing that if you just could get this done, everything else opens up. It's very, very exciting. If you recognize and define every single thing you do in the morning as a success, the unconscious concludes that your intentions succeed. Creating this pattern of success becomes a symbolic suggestion to the unconscious that enables you to produce major results with ease. See, the unconscious generalizes that you succeed in your intentions. It doesn't matter if it's large or small. Your unconscious says they do what they say. That's what we do. That is what we're taught to do. If we say it, we do it. This is so, so, so powerful. And just sit with that for a second. How powerful is that? That's what a morning routine is about. That's what it's about. The way you start your day gives the biggest suggestion to your unconscious mind about what is important to you. You know, I don't even look at, at my phone until at least an hour and a half or two hours after I'm awake. I don't even, I don't have any, I don't even, I don't have anything other than me and my choices and, and talking to my wife and going for a walk. That's all I have, you know. I love to make sure in the morning that I'm focused, that I'm hydrated, and I love to give myself great nutrition. So I use a green drink uh, to, to teach my body that I'm abundant. I have all the nutrients that I need. It doesn't take long to, to be able to start being someone who has this. So for me, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's 15 to 30 minutes every single day that I do it. And, and I think, and I know that others have, many of you have super busy lives. Some of you live in places where maybe walking or doing things outside in the morning is definitely not available. But I know that if every single one of us can just choose to own one part of our day, you can choose to get up 20 minutes earlier. You can choose to find 20 minutes to yourself, have a coffee, have a meditation, whatever it is that your morning ritual is going to be. But it doesn't have to take long. Out of everything that you can do in your day, who's ever experienced this? There's so many parts of your day that you don't really have control over. Does that mean like there's lots of parts of your day you just don't have control over? Like, you know, there's the traffic, there's, the, there's weather, there's kids, there's school, there's universities, there's there's colleagues, like there's, there's bosses, there's clients, there's lots of, but the one at the end of the day, like there's one time you have control. And that is, you can just get up before 30 minutes before and, and, and you can control that. You can control that. Like, and I love that. I know that, that every person on this call, they can find that. And that's where you can put your magnetic mind work. That's where you can put it. And if you don't, if you do nothing but that, your life's going to change completely.